I'm at a, a urinal, which is beautiful, and Todd's here too. Say hi, Todd. Hey, here, wave. No, no, there you are. Say hi. We can see What's you. Up? Todd's in the stall. Oh, I'm out here. Hopefully, there's no one else here. Yeah, but look at this no bathroom. Isn't that nice? Isn't look at the white like the and the stripes. checkered. It's all about the checkers and, and the white and black. Ooh, and look at those sunflowers. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and they're not real. I know, it's but it's beautiful. Mackenzie Childs. Mackenzie Childs. Yeah. Okay, bye. Someone's coming in. Oh, sorry. Bye. Oh. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Monday, October 30th, 2023. I'm J.E. Skeets here in the Classic Factory. To my left, the bearded one, Matasha Hot Boy, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. And over yonder, the man making the magic happen. We call him our super producer. That's JD. Hello. There he is. And here we are. Shout out to the stream team. Joining us live right now on YouTube. Smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe and comment away there in the stream team. And if you're a podcast listener, leave your boys a five-star rating and review. Come on, let's climb up those NBA podcast ranks. Mm -hmm. Tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, playback, watch party. We're going to focus on Heat Bucks. That's on League Pass, but we'll be jumping around as well. Probably catch the uh, the ending of a few of those earlier games. Bulls Pacers, Celtics Wizards, Blazers Raptors. Might be a couple others uh, in there. So anyway, join us tonight on Playback. We have a blast. Just hanging out, shooting the shit, mm-hmm. watching games, bouncing around. 8 p.m. That link is in the show notes because I uh, remembered to do it here this morning. <laughs> Good memory, man. Good for me. Big winner of the weekend, Skeets. Memory Monday. Uh, if you're new to No Dunks here, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, something we do on Mondays, usually at least, is NBA weekend winners and losers. It's our way to recap the busy NBA slate. Let's start with the winners. Trey will bounce back and forth and talk them through. Who's your big NBA weekend winner? Big NBA weekend winner. Got to be the 76ers for me. Okay. Here's the baseline case, Skeets. 2-0 this weekend. They beat the Raptors. They beat the Trailblazers. Going in, you're probably thinking they should win those games. Sure. Fair enough. And Bede was dominant in both. 34 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, a steal, and 2 blocks against the Raptors. Then on Sunday, flirted with skipping the home opener. Resting. Questionable for rest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this guy might want to take a nap. We're not sure. We'll yeah. ask him when he wakes up. Instead, he dropped 35 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, 6 blocks, Four DX crotch chops <laughs> on the Blazers. I'm going to give him a near five by five. He didn't get to the three steals, which we would like, you know, going past 50% on all five categories. Yeah, yeah. But the four DX crotch chops, I think, take it to <laughs> near five by five levels. The Sixers even had James Harden on the bench joking around with PJ Tucker. But the real reason they're getting my ultimate winner of the weekend is because of Tyrese Maxey. This guy is incredible. 31 and eight on opening night over the weekend, 34 points, seven assists, and one turnover versus the Raptors. Then he had an off night against the Blazers, just 26 points, 10 assists, and two turnovers. Through the first week of the season, he's averaging 36 and six, shooting 50% from the field, 56 from three and 91 at the line. This could be a Flip Murray leading the league in scoring for two weeks type beat, but I don't think so. It looks like he's made a leap. 20 points per game last season. 30 is unlikely for the entirety of the year. It'll go somewhere in the middle, sure. Exactly. 25 seems realistic to me because nobody can stay in front of Tyrese at Maxey. He's one of the five fastest guys in the league. He's been getting to the line. And most importantly, the one-two with Joel Embiid looks just as nice as it did with James Harden. So take your time, Daryl, is kind of what I'm saying here. Right now, the Sixers look good. The vibes are good. Ain't no reason to rush into a deal now if you've already waited out the first week of the season. I was just going to ask you, what do you do with Harden? He's now around the team. <laughs> if he's going to participate in five-on-five drills here, maybe this week. We'll wait and see. You never know with Harden. Uh, could he return to Philly? And then the question off is, is, is should he return to Philly? And, and you may be... Uh, mess with what seems to be a great thing with Maxi obviously being your lead go-to ball handler and the one-two he has going with Embiid. Like, should you even, should you even risk that? Like, sure you can slow play trading him, but should you even bring him back? In all honesty. Uh, shout out to Randy Jackson. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> I say keep him out because they don't play until Thursday. I heard uh, Tim Bontemps on the Hoop Collective saying it kind of comes down to Thursday. If Harden plays, he's kind of part of the rotation here uh, with the Sixers going forward. But if he sits out or if the Sixers tell him to stay home, uh, 
that he's probably going to be sitting out until they decide to trade him, which more likely is going to be in December when more players uh, are available. But Maxi looks so good right now, handling the additional responsibility uh, with Harden out. We've seen him do it a couple of years back when Ben Simmons was sitting out, and that was his second season in the league. Now yeah. he's year four. He's learned the craft of the game. I mean, the one-two is just perfect uh, with him and Embiid. So as long as they're winning, as long as they're playing well, I don't think there's any reason to bring back Harden. There's a bit of trickle-down effect, too. Tobias Harris is playing really, really well. I think yeah. Nick Nurse is... Uh, Tried to encourage him to let it fly, uh, maybe a little bit more than Doc Rivers did. He was sort of finding his spots within uh, Rivers' system there. But Nurse like, hey, look, you're a great shooter. You're open. Let it go. So he's playing well. But, yeah, Maxi, uh, easy front runner for most improved, I'd say, uh, through the you know ballpark first week of the season. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. He, he yeah. fits the bill. Uh, it's year four, so we're not getting the year two bump, which okay is great. Even year three. Uh, and kind of the style of player who's been winning MIP a lot lately is a player who was good, who became great, and maybe even made their first All-Star yeah, game. Yeah, That could easily be Maxi. Yeah, just specifically with the Raptors' performance, Maxi, would you say go for going for 34? Like, the one thing Maxi always lit up the Raptors, and we would always blame it on, ah, oh, Fred Van Vliet. You know, he's a good <laughs> defender, but he just can't hang with slow, the, the yeah. speedy Maxi. Well, now we got Schroeder in there, who's arguably one of the fastest guys in the league, at least offensively as well, and yeah, he's still blowing by him. Like, it doesn't matter. He is fast. He is so, so damn quick. So, Maxi... And beat in his crotch chops and uh, the Sixers, a uh, winner of the weekend. I'd like to point out, you said four DX crotch chops? Yes. Not at two different times or three different times or four different times. <laughs> yeah. All four after one made basket. Four straight after one make. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he was like, yeah, I had to throw it back to the old me. <laughs> it was like Bruce on Survivor. I got to be Bruce here. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> All right, let's keep going because we got a ton to talk about. Chop, 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 yeah, chop. I, want, I want one extra. Chop, chop, chop. Next well, that game, maybe. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. My winner of the weekend, I'm going to start with uh, Steph Curry's three-point flurry on Sunday to beat the Rockets. Here's how this goes down. Curry, pretty quiet through most of the game on Sunday. Dare I say Dylan Brooks and the Rockets <laughs> doing a pretty good job on Steph Curry. Wow. <laughs> Suddenly the Rockets were in the lead. They were hanging with the Warriors. And then Steph Curry said, okay, that's enough. Thanks. Thanks for playing, guys. Uh, he erupted with about five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The NBA's all-time greatest shooter laced three-pointers on four consecutive possessions to take a one-point Warriors lead to 11 in less than two minutes. <laughs> this was the ultimate Curry flurry, and he punctuated that personal 12-0 run by clowning Dylan Brooks. Literally... Dropped him like three times on that one was, possession and amazing. just had him like running around there like a chicken with his head cut off. And then the debate is uh, after he hit that 4-3 and basically iced the game, Curry does the, uh, you know, this this post-cook celebration, if you want to call it that, hands to the side of the face. And everybody mm -hmm. is debating, is he doing a, a Kevin from Home Alone? Is he doing the, the guy next to a super hot fire from the meme? Or is he doing the <laughs> scream painting? You have three options. I think all work. <laughs> so which one would you say he's doing, TK? Uh, Kevin from Home Alone, the, the meme guy in the Super Hot Fire sort of video, or the scream painting? Uh, I feel like I saw the scream painting as a Photoshop most often last night after this happened. I think you're right. I but think I think right. that's the least likely. There ain't okay. no way <laughs> that Steph Curry was referencing a Norwegian <laughs> painter from 80 years ago. I don't think that was the case. For me, when I see this, I instantly think Home Alone yeah. first, but I'm old. Steph Curry is old, but maybe not quite as old. So I'll go with the meme because he is kind of shocked here. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he's not putting aftershave on his face. He's got a little bit yeah, of a it's beard. Too yeah. it's too high. It's way too high for yeah. the McAllister. So you think it's the meme <laughs> the guy? Yeah. No, I think it's Munch. Oh, I wow. think it's the scream. <laughs> <laughs> I right. mean, we should get a poll going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but incredible performance from him. And uh, also of note in this game for the Warriors, Chris Paul coming off the bench for the first time in his 19 season career. He had started over 1,300 games, including the playoffs uh, mm -hmm. and, of course, the regular season. And since 1970 71, that's the most consecutive starts to begin a career prior to coming off the bench for the first time. That's by way of ESPN stats and info. And, you know, it worked. Uh, you know, one game, Rockets fought hard, uh, and then Curry took over. But, uh, yeah, I guess Chris Paul, we'll see if it continues. Sounds like it will, at least for the next game. And he seems on board with it and, yep. like, is uh, ready to go. And, yeah, it was a fun game. I had this one on the on TV last night. And oh, yeah. And I was like, wow, Rockets might do this. Oh, man, the Warriors, are they going to struggle on the road again? And uh, Curry said, it's okay. I got this one. Yeah, 
there are a bunch of teams that were not fans of Michael Jordan, like the Knicks and the Cavs, teams that he just showed up and hit big shots yeah, against sure. time and time again. That is Steph Curry for Rockets fans because this guy has been absolutely <laughs> torturing them. And like you're saying, look, this game, they could have gotten home. They could have gotten yeah. the win uh, until Curry decided to just put things away. Even Laura was laughing after he hit that 4-3 oh and did the face. God. It's like he scored 12 points in two minutes. And I was like thinking about the math. I was like, the shot clock is 24 seconds. That's like every time down. It was incredible uh, the way he did that. And then, yeah, you mentioned Chris Paul coming off the bench, a plus 22. There was a huge run uh, for the Warriors end of the first quarter into the start of the second quarter where they were plus 16 with Curry sitting. They're like never plus when Steph Curry sits. So if Chris Paul is able to just have that bench be not negative, that is huge for Golden State. I think Kerr said as much like, whether Chris Paul starts or comes off the bench, mainly is going to be playing with that second unit with the idea yeah. that, yeah, he's out there running the show, taking care of the ball, setting guys up, maybe getting some things from the younger guys to, like, weather the storm when Curry's on the bench. But, yeah, being a positive when Steph is sitting, that is, that's huge for the Warriors uh, moving forward. Uh, you, you slipped it in there that Rockets fans must, must hate this Steph Curry. I mean, obviously, yes. ripping their heart out. It's funny, though, watching it because there's a ton of Warriors fans in attendance, too. So every shot he hits, there's like a big <laughs> eruption in the crowd, even on the road. But who is uh, who is the top three fan bases that would hate Steph Curry? Sounds like the Rockets for sure. Uh-huh. I would say the Kings of, yeah. of recent yeah, note because yeah, he's always mix, scored yeah. 50 or 40 and hitting game winners. Who's the third team or who, who else is on the list? I would be curious how Knicks fans feel. Because they thought oh. they were getting Steph Curry on draft night, and then he had his first huge game in Madison Square Garden to put himself on the map. Didn't he break the three-point record there? Yeah, or he tried to, tried maybe he to. tied it, something like that. Uh, they don't meet each other enough, and there hasn't obviously been a Warriors versus Knicks finals matchup to really drive it home. So it's probably got to be a Western Conference team. How about the Minnesota Timberwolves? Johnny Flynn. I mean, every time you see him, that's got to hurt. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Rubio's one thing, but like then Johnny Flynn, yeah. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay. Uh, You tell us. uh, Let us know uh, who else hates him. OKC, people are saying. Lakers. Celtics. Yeah, there's probably a lot of teams. Blazers. Uh, let's keep it going here. Who else you got as a winner? The Pelicans as a medium winner of the weekend. They beat the Knicks in an ugly one on Saturday. Knicks were on the second night of a road back-to-back. They played in Atlanta here on Friday, then went to New Orleans, and it kind of looked like they were playing their second game uh, of a back-to-back. But shout-out to the Pelicans. They didn't let them off the hook. 52 points in the paint for New Orleans. They forced 19 turnovers uh, from the Knicks. Zion and Brian, Brian, Brandon Ingram combined for 50 points together. Kind of a fair game, but I was really impressed by what I saw from rookie Jordan Hawkins. Went 3 of 6 from 3. New Orleans was just 9 of 33 on the night. They are bricky from outside, so if he's able to shoot it with Trey Murphy out of the lineup, with Jose Alvarado missing time uh, to start the season, he's got a chance to at least establish himself in their rotation I think just because they're going to need somebody who's willing to catch and shoot as soon as he gets it he's definitely that guy they've been playing Matt Ryan as well he had a game winner for the Lakers early in the season about this time uh last year and then fell out of the rotation so he's probably a guy that will go away when Trey Murphy returns uh from his injury but I think Hawkins can stick just because they need anybody who can shoot around Zion and around B.I. hilarious quote uh from Zion post game he said, when I was younger, he was talking about his finishing in the lane. Mm-hmm. He's only 6'6", but obviously he, you know, he's built like Zion. Yeah. He said, when I was younger, I used to go to the park. I was a lot smaller than everybody, so you've got to figure out touch around the basket. I don't believe it. You don't buy that. When was he ever a lot smaller than everybody? Height-wise, maybe. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> I can't imagine there's a lot of courts Zion's ever stepped on where he's not the strongest guy. Yeah, yeah. Who's the guy at the at park? what like, age? You're tiny, yeah. Well, but maybe he's playing with, like, just grown-ass That man. could be, that could be. <laughs> but, man, he's got some touch. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no doubt about it. You said you're all back in on Zion in the Pels. Took two games. No, it took one game. One game, that's <laughs> he true. Didn't even, he didn't actually even play all that well, no. but he was uh, he is scoring again, and he's just so explosive, and there's no way to guard him. Really, when he has got it going, it's just a matter of staying on the court for him. Six teams undefeated, uh, again, through almost one week of basketball. In the East, it's the Celtics, the Magic, and the Pacers. And then in the West, it's the Nuggets, who are the only 3-0 team. The Mavs, 2-0. And then the Pels, yep. uh, 2-0. But I like you uh, specifically pointing out uh, Hawkins there. Yeah, adding some shooting. And they're, they're down guys they're as down well. They're down guys, yeah. Uh, so good start from the Pels. My winner of the weekend, Jalen Duran. And the 2-1 Pistons. 
Oh, yes. On Saturday, Jalen Duran scored 23 points on 9 of 11 shooting from the field versus your Bulls. He added 15 boards and 5 assists. He became just the second teenager in NBA history to record at least 20 points, 15 boards, and 5 assists in a game, joining, of course, LeBron James. That is wild. So through three games, Duran is averaging 18 points, an NBA high, 15 boards, 4 assists. The play making is nice. And 2.7 blocks per game on 80% shooting. <laughs> um, he is finishing everything in the paint. Like lobs, put back dunks, going through like multiple bodies and just putting them in the net. He, uh, he's got the, it reminds me of young Dwight Howard, the way he's built and the ups he's got and just how he attacks the rim. But what a start from the Detroit Pistons. I mean, this is great. New coach Monty Williams coming in here. Obviously some expectations with Cade back. He's been good, 22-8 and eight for Cade Cunningham. Alec Burks. Alec Burks. Alec Burks. He's on fire off the bench. He's hit 11 threes, which is wild. Uh, Thompson's been a menace defensively. Beef Stew is shooting and hitting the three uh, a decent amount. He's rebounding as well, 10 boards. So, yeah, Jalen Duran and the Pistons getting a winner of the weekend here. Great start for them. Uh, you know, along with the Magic, who I said are 2-0, and oh, it's nice. And, and the Pacers, really. Those teams that people, like, talk themselves into, like, maybe they can do something. I know it's super, super early, small sample size and all that. But, like, good start for these teams that you're like, oh, yeah, they have some talent. They play hard. They're going to catch a lot of teams by surprise. Yeah, and... Much different stakes, but do you remember this must have been the 2012-13 season? The Spurs came into the playoffs on a 10-game winning streak. Then they won their first 10 games in the playoffs. I do. Including taking a 2-0 lead on the Thunder. But then the last four games, the Thunder looked so much more athletic and just younger yes. <laughs> than the Spurs did. They ripped off four straight wins to send the Spurs home. Uh, that's what it looked like to me. Pistons versus Bulls. The Bulls looked quite old against <laughs> Detroit. Jalen Duran made Vooch look ancient the way Duran was just so much faster yeah. and so much more explosive getting to the rim. Second night of a back-to-back -back for both of these teams, and you could tell young legs can handle it a little bit yeah. better than old legs. And, man, yeah, Sir Thompson. You know, Zach Levine had 51 points in this game. He lit it up, but he only scored two points in the last eight minutes, and Thompson was all over yep. him from basically half court on. He's been rebounding like crazy over 10 boards a game, I think, in each of their games so far, and he had a sick, sick pass uh, to Beef Stew for a dunk underneath the hoop as well. So impressive stuff uh, from Detroit. Really good start for the Pistons. Two and one, that's a... Uh... That's a record you haven't seen with Detroit in a while. It feels like uh, maybe they started one of these seasons uh, a little better than I'm remembering. But obviously a team that's been bad for a long time. There's some hope there. And you just hope, obviously, Cade can stay healthy. And, like, Cade and, and Jalen Duran, they got a nice little one-two action. I mean, maybe the, the reps they got playing for the select team with two, Team USA, I mean, they, they just got nice chemistry, these two. So uh, sky's the limit for, for the youth movement there. Who else you got for a winner? Luka Doncic has to get a winner yeah. of the weekend. Hung 49 on the Nets on Friday, and the Mavs needed basically all of them, including the one-foot banked-in three from 25 feet that Luka made to put the Mavs up 26 with 26 seconds left. Tim Cato's got a great article over at The Athletic. You can subscribe at theathletic.com slash no dunks, where basically he asked a bunch of people who have been around Luka for his entire career if that's the toughest shot he's ever hit in the game. Luka said yes. So, I mean... Good evidence there to begin sure. with. I mean, when you look at the entire possession, how hard they had to get yeah. him the ball. Like, he got it back and forth like three times. Yeah, Dorian Finney-Smith also said that's the toughest shot he's ever hit because I was guarding him. <laughs> Respect <laughs> to that. There were some other candidates. Uh, Luca had a game-winning three against the Grizzlies where he's, like, leaning off of one foot, which is huge. He had that tipped-in free throw against the Knicks oh. last year where he's jumping around all happy afterwards. And he also had a game-tying three uh, from the corner as a rookie against Portland where he catches the ball and, like, gets it off in under a second. That was an amazing one as well. But this one uh, that he hit uh, from the wing, they were calling it Luka Magic. You cannot disagree. 49 points, 9 threes, 10 boards, 7 assists, and 0 turnovers for Luka in this game. Scored 14 of the Mavs last 17 over the final 522 seconds of the game. Oh, thank you for yeah. breaking down the, the seconds there. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> 322 left. Uh, but two huge stat lines so far for Luka. Two clutch wins yeah. for the Mavericks. Mavs, like you said, one of the six teams to finish this week unbeaten. I think this is the year I should have taken Luca for MVP. Oh, I think it's I the one year you seats. swerved. Yeah, exactly. Guys, killing it right now. Oh, I know that. I mean, every three that he took down the stretch in that game got more and more difficult. Yeah. Uh, obviously, ending with the one-handed. Like he almost like he 
he almost threw it like a baseball too. He like he threw yeah, a little curve on it, almost like a football, I guess. Like he spun it out of his one hand, where he's trapped on the side and the shot clock's winding down. And he banks it in, and uh, I did hear the uh, the uh, wind horse on his podcast talking with uh, both Tim's there. The idea, like, did he did he call glass? Like they asked, and Dorian <laughs> Finney-Smith's like, "There's no way he called glass. He didn't call glass. Trust me, I'm out there <laughs> trying to guard him." And then uh, Luca post game said. Uh, well, I did. I just said it in Slovenian. Uh, <laughs> and so they didn't really understand what I was saying, which is pretty funny. Uh, but what a shot. Uh, final couple winners of the weekend. Just some honorable mentions. Jokic and the undefeated Nuggets. They're 3-0, and like I said. Uh, Nate Jones tweeted uh, yesterday, I guess. Long season, but the Nuggets seem to have the, uh, oh, these mofos didn't respect our title win mentality to start the season. It doesn't seem like we'll see a defending champ hangover. They are all business. That is the truth, and uh, you know, you bring up Luca's crazy shot. I'm sure you saw Jokic's what 70 foot inbounds no. alley oop pass oh to uh, cool. Aaron Gordon, who threw it down. Like what a one handed, what, what, what a catch by Aaron Gordon to go up and catch a 70 foot pass one handed and dunk it. Come on, it was like thrown so so perfect. I mean, it was thrown so quickly, so perfectly. Like the broadcast basically missed it. Yeah. Um, the then, now you've seen some angles probably on Twitter and stuff like that. Just an unbelievable play, and they are like, yeah. I mean, they're just. Jokic is just, I mean, it is so easy what he's doing. It was pretty funny to watch him abuse Chet Holmgren yesterday in okay. in that matchup. Everybody's excited, both teams undefeated, and the Nuggets, they they, they killed him. There's but, levels. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chet will get there eventually, but yeah. Jokic went 12 for 16, then told Chet to get his weight up. Yeah, I think he needs to be a little bit fatter, yeah. he said yeah. afterwards. He's got diet tips for you. Drink <laughs> two, two liters every single day. But, man, they look unstoppable right now. And Michael Porter Jr. is 12th in the league in rebounding. 11.3 boards per game. Hasn't shot it all that well uh, to yep. start the season, but he's good. And he's contributing in other ways. Yeah, and then, yeah, Christian Brown slotted in perfectly as their sixth man. Uh, Watson blocks absolutely everything. That guy's nuts on the he defensive down end. Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, Shea had a brutal game uh, on Sunday, but yeah, Nuggets uh, deserve some mention here. And then Darren Fox, thirty-seven points against the Lakers in overtime. He had thirty-seven and eight. He uh, scored eight points in the final six minutes of regulation after returning from an ankle injury, which then sort of sidelined him. But Malik Monk stepped up. He scored eleven of his twenty-two points in overtime. Eleven points in overtime. Uh, and set up one for Herter as well, big three, for the, uh, the for the Kings to put away the Lakers. So a little love. Uh, that was the late game there on Sunday night, which was entertaining. Yep. A couple more minor winners. Zach Levine mentioned at career high 51 points in that loss to Detroit, our first 50-point game of the season. Yep. Came alongside zero assists. I wow. like that. I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting buckets. Get on my back. Yeah, we lost by 10, but still, thank you for trying. Uh, we had some big dunks from Alperin Shengun yes. and Jalen Johnson. They could make a top 10 list at the end of the season. I thought they were that good. I think it's interesting, though, first week of the season, we always see one of the better dunks of the year. I think it's because people's legs are feeling great. Oh. And also people aren't quite sure what everybody's capable of sure. early in the season. Sure. I remember like Derek Jones Jr. had one of the best dunks of the year in like the 2015 season. I don't know. I remember That's true that. sicko shit yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, also, Nas Reed got Nas Reed chance. That was cool. That was very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Jalen Johnson, just to, to slip uh, a little bit more in on him because we were uh, tweeting about him. I tweeted about him. You literally like three minutes oh. later were tweeting about him. Nate Jones also was tweeting about him. Everybody is like, wow, Jalen Johnson. This, we're all fans. This looks legit here. I mean, he looks incredible in transition, yep. both offensively and defensively, like chasing down guys. He is mad athletic. The shot looks good. I think they've worked on the mechanics a little bit. Looks a little smoother, at least his confidence. So uh, Hawks picking up a big win, obviously, against the Bucks. Their first win of I the think, season. I think he started, right, against Milwaukee yes. and started the first couple he, of games for Atlanta. But uh, if he's going to be playing this well, he definitely should have that spot over Bay. Yeah. All right, got to take a break. And when we come back... Losers of the NBA weekend. Don't go anywhere. In my house, AG means all good. In this hat, in this ad, AG means athletic greens. But I'm here to tell you, AG is AG. And shout out to Aaron Gordon. <laughs> if you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, or a stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, you gotta check out Athletic Greens. Taking a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning, NG, not good. But with Athletic Greens, you can get rid of all those extra vitamin bottles and finally make some room in your cabinet. Because Athletic Greens is an all-in-one solution that ATG actually tastes good. You're going to enjoy getting your daily vitamins. 
With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It supports better sleep quality, mental clarity, and alertness. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. Just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. That's it. One scoop, mm. cup of water. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash noducks. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash noducks to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe, comment away. As the stream team is here on a Monday morning, podcast listeners, leave us a five-star rating and review, and we would appreciate that. Uh, the biggest NBA weekend loser was very easy to select here this morning. It was anyone associated with the Raptors Bulls No Dunks Bowl, the No Dunks Toilet Bowl <laughs> on Friday night. So that includes us as uh, Raptors and Bulls fans. What an insane game. <laughs> I will try my best to break it all down. So the Bulls went from leading by 19 points in the second quarter to trailing by 11 in the third. There were big swings in this game. It was like Rob Deere at the plate. Big swings. (laughs) That's a baseball reference for you. Uh, Toronto then went on a 14-2 run in the fourth. They're up by 19. (laughs) Raptors cruise into a victory. No, no, no. Bulls pull even. Uh, DeRozan was, uh, you know, instrumental in the late push near the end of regulation, but <laughs> he missed three free throws in the final, like, 13 seconds of regulation, including one at the end that would have won the game. So in overtime, this dumb game goes, and Toronto's up four. 30 seconds to go. 103.99. All right, let's close it out. DeRozan scores on the uh, easiest layup imaginable. Let's just <laughs> give him that one. I guess don't foul him, boys. And then Caruso makes a really impressive defensive play, sort of a block steal on Siakam. They push the ball in transition. Zach Levine, he's going at the net. Defenders collapse on him. And this guy, who just scored uh, the, you know, a, a night later, 51 points with zero assists, he makes a great pass to the corner where Caruso is screaming to the corner, finds him open there. He bangs home, bangs home the open three, and the Bulls go on to win this dumb game. <laughs> now, I will say the Bulls win aided by a pair of referee mistakes, uh, according to the NBA's last two-minute report, which came out the day later. DeRozan should have been called for a traveling violation with six seconds remaining in the fourth, and that was the one where DeRozan instead got a foul uh, on a three-pointer with Boucher getting the foul call. And then the league also determined that Siakam should not have been called for an offensive foul with three seconds left (laughs) after the Raptors had inbounded the ball, which set up the whole thing where the uh, Bulls got the game to overtime. So you got some help from the refs, but this game is so stupid. And again, like just wild swings and dumb plays and dumb fouls and missed free throws. And it had it all. So we're all losers for having watched this one. Yeah, and all the teams are losers because they were both trying to lose this game. How did DeMar DeRozan take eight free throws in the final 20 seconds when his team was losing? It doesn't make any sort of sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Some of it was ref-aided. Some of it was pump fake-aided. Yes, yeah. uh, certainly. Uh, the only guy that gets a pass definitely is a, is Caruso. 13 points, 13 boards, had the steal and the three uh, to yeah. win the game and somehow finished a plus 29 in this game. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. This is an overtime game. An overtime one-point game. He was a plus 29. Oh, boy. I can't wait to see this again in the uh, play-in game, the 9-10 play-in game. Yeah. <laughs> there might maybe, not be a maybe. worse, like, final minute of a game this know, entire season. I know. You're just left like, what are you doing? Like, I, I knew the result of the game because we jumped on playback on Saturday morning to go over the highlights together. Right. Obviously knew what happened, saw the ending, and it was like still watching it again. It's weird where you're like, Look at the score. Look at the time. Look who has the ball. It's like, how do we lose this game? Like, doesn't this make doesn't sense. make any sense. Except it's self-inflicted, and yeah, there's some stupid calls. Definitely uh, uh, the offensive foul call, they said, 
it was marginal. Like there was contact, but probably not enough to warrant an offense foul. But anyway, uh, congrats on the win. Yeah. Congrats <laughs> on that shitty win. Uh, all right, who else you got for the loser of the weekend? Yeah, not a great weekend for the Memphis Grizzlies. They lost on to the Nuggets on Friday. Understandable. Yeah. They're getting a loser because of the loss to the Wizards on Sunday. Bit of a weird one. Memphis is very, very short-handed right now. Uh, but Washington missed their first eight shots of this game and still led after the first quarter. Then Corey Kispert poured in 15, 16 during the second quarter, and the route was on, really, mm-hmm. uh, for Washington. Watching this one back, this didn't feel like the Grizzlies that we're used to uh, from the past couple of seasons. Like I mentioned, they're missing quite a few players right now, but they only forced 11 turnovers. They gave up 11 offensive rebounds, and Memphis only took nine free throws. It looked like the Wizards were going anywhere they wanted to. Zero physicality from Memphis, which is surprising to see. Zero resistance on the defensive end. It feels like they need a big-time attitude infusion right now. With no jaw, no Steven Adams, and Dylan Brooks leaving Memphis, those are like three of their biggest attitude guys. Now, they got Marcus Smart back. Yeah. He's their point guard. He's there. I think he's going to have to take a little bit of a leadership role right now and kind of just light into some guys and say, we got to toughen up here. It's going to be a slow start to the season for Memphis. It looks like Uh, their offense is going to be a struggle to watch, I do believe, but they can at least be better on the defensive end and more intense on the defensive end. I think it's going to have to start with Smart and obviously with Jaron Jackson Jr. as well, but he's not necessarily like a get him riled up, get him fired up type beat kind of guy. So I hope that Marcus Smart really kind of falls into the role he was with the Celtics with Ja out right now there's a void uh at top uh the Grizzlies absolutely I mean even with yeah Tyus Jones just not even being there to run that second unit or to step into the starting role uh as we've seen in years prior where John Morant was out but yeah this is a bad bad start offensively they have been very rough in terms of scoring um you almost start to worry like is this just going to be a completely wasted season for the Grizzlies and John Morant. I know he'll be coming back, but like, where will they be when he comes back? And how, how can they catch back up and all that? But I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself, but rough start. Glad you included them. I had a poll up on our sort of YouTube community page over the weekend before they played this game. I had like, what's the most surprising 0-2 start? At the time, it was uh, the Grizzlies I had on there. The Hawks obviously finally won. Uh, the Rockets and the Blazers and like, Grizzlies ran away with the vote. It was like 60%. It's like the Hawks a little shocking, but yeah, the Grizz now 0-3. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good. They got the Mavericks coming up, and then they got a three-game road trip, uh, Jazz, and then two games uh, back-to-back in Portland. So, you know, they'll they'll should pick up a victory. Yes, yes. Uh, Either maybe in Utah or definitely in Portland, picking up one, if not both of those. But we'll see against the Mavs. Grizz, 0-3. Uh, I'll also go with an 0-3 team for loser of the weekend, Portland Trailblazers. Now, unlike the Grizzlies, who we expect to be better, even if they're missing some guys, a lot of people thought the Blazers were going to be bad. Mm-hmm. But they are still one of four teams without a win. It's Memphis, Houston, Brooklyn, and Portland. Uh, dominating? Not dominating. He's been bad. He has been the opposite of dominating. Uh, Aiton is averaging 8.3 points per game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's making uh, myself look a little silly. We thought that fresh start would be great. Uh, you know, a lot of no pressure up there. Thought he would at least rack up some stats, and that's not happening. Foul trouble, does, and not playing a ton. He just is, he's taking 20 shots. He's not shooting a games. ton. Yeah. yeah that's he a, needs a playmaker to be setting him up, and obviously we've had a slow start for Scoot Henderson. Yes. Malcolm Brogdon is like their best ball handler right now. He's a good passer, but he's not necessarily a playmaker. And then, of course, Aiton has taken a grand total of one free throw yeah. in three games. That's how you're going to be on, uh, under 10 points per game. But you're yeah. right. I mean, the, the guards are now Scoot and Shaden Sharp. And yes. those guys are not playmakers yeah. uh, in the sense of get the big guy the ball. Uh, Scoot Henderson, yeah, he can't hit a three to save his life here to start the season. I think he's hit one. Uh, he's turning it over a ton. That's to be expected, obviously, uh, learning the point guard role in the NBA. But rough, rough start. And then to top it all off, on Friday, the team announced that uh, Anthony Simons is expected to miss four to six weeks with a UCL tear in his right thumb. So, woo! Again, nobody thought the Blazers were going to really be a playoff team or anything like that, but just, uh, I mean, this just sucks. Simons out. Obviously, uh, your your star guy in the trade ain't nothing, and your number three pick, also really, really bad start. He'll get it going. Like, there'll be a month or two where he pops off, but... 
Not good for the Blazers. Yeah, definitely not good for the Blazers. And, uh, I mean, uh, definitely a concerning start for Scoot, just how overwhelmed he's looked because he was kind of pitched as an NBA-ready guy yeah. with the the jacked frame uh, that he's got. But point guard's a hard position to learn, especially if you don't have anybody else that's a threat. And so far, Aiton has not been a threat. I guess Jeremy Grant is scoring the ball okay, but he's just going to kind of pick up numbers as the season goes on. So I think the Blazers owe the Bulls a top four protected pick this year. Looking pretty safe, depending on lottery odds, of course. And uh, I wonder, you know, who is going to make the trade for Robert Williams III? Could it be the Grizzlies? Could it be the uh, Grizzlies. Who is going to try and make a trade for Malcolm Brogdon to, like, shore up your bench and obviously help your team uh, maybe go further in the playoffs and stuff like that? It's, it's weird they're there. It's obviously a little strange even seeing them in uniform and thinking, well, they're probably not going to be here for the long <laughs> run. But, yeah, they got to get Aiton. He's got to get going. He's got to see the ball a little bit more. He's got to shoot it. It's on him. It's on the team. And then, yeah, Scoot's got to finally find his three and, and take care of the ball a little bit more. Uh, who else you got? Well, it's been a while since we've had an iconic bad national anthem, Skeets. Not since Fergie at the 2018 All-Star Game have we seen such a transcendent bomb, but luckily the Bucks hired Flavor Flav <laughs> to sing their anthem on Sunday night. When as expected. Oh, oh say. Yeah. Can you I thought I was like, going insane watching the Hawks broadcast when they said Flavor Flav did the anthem. I was like, no way. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's exactly how I would expect a Flavor Flav anthem to go, for sure. I do like how he's um, trying a little vibrato yeah. on the longer notes. Yeah. And his voice, I would say, is better than anticipated. Um, considering Flavor Flav was basically a hype man, I think it is pretty hilarious. He kept his hat on for the entire time. Because I know the announcement said, if you're able, please stand and remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem by Public Enemies Flavor Flav. <sighs> yeah, he's, he's like... Um, He's actually a really talented mus musician, musician yeah, yeah. isn't he? Like, at least on the piano, I know that. But um, <laughs> he did tweet. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. He did tweet because obviously, you know, Twitter's going nuts. Oh, my God, this is brutal. Quote, the anthem was a longtime bucket list item. That was fun. I can't live my life worried about what people might say about me. I won't let that stop me from trying new things and doing things I want to do. Some people might not like it. But a sure failure is if you stop trying. Well, so, you know, it's the right, yep, <laughs> right way right. to look at it. That's but right. a fascinating just decision to, I guess, <laughs> yeah. let him do what it. a guy to pick. Yeah. This yeah. is a winner to me. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's not terrible, but it's got to go in the losers because it's not good. I, I agree with you it's not good, but it is way better than I thought it was going to be for <laughs> Flavor Flav. I mean, it's... Fine. It's you know actually it's weird? fine. It, like, there are parts where it sounds actually, dare I say, decent. Yeah, uh, agree. And then, agree. And then it, yeah, then it's like, oh, then the, I don't know, his tone, his, his yeah, voice. It's, he's, he's a bit pitchy, as they say, but I don't know. I, he's He gave it his all, and it's not that, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And it's Flavor Flav. I mean, what do you, it's awesome. He, uh, he committed to it. He, he, he committed that. to it. He could it. have very easily, like, sort of bailed and, like, you see people doing karaoke. Yeah. Which is, like, that's the cardinal sin. You, if, hey, look, you're bad at karaoke, you got power through. Yeah. Um, so he did that. If I, have, Carl Lewis. if I have yeah. one note, it's that it's too long. It's too it's so long. It's so, so long. Slow, like, yeah. yeah, the tempo, just pick it up, flavor. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, remix. <laughs> Well, maybe that explains Damian Lillard's rough night, because that's my final loser of the weekend. <laughs> Off of that anthem, uh, Lillard, and, and really coming on the heels of a storybook debut with the Bucks last Thursday, Dame on Sunday, rough, rough game. Start to finish there. Uh, he finished with six points on 2 of 12 shooting. It was just the 16th time in Damian Lillard's career he scored fewer than 10 points. Uh, he had nearly as many turnovers as missed shots in the first half, six to seven in those departments. It was wild yesterday watching Shane Gildas Alexander just not be able to hit a shot and get nothing going, and then the same with Damian Lillard later on in the uh, in the Hawks Bucks game there. So have to give him a little loser of the weekend. Yeah, that's got to be one of the worst games Lillard has ever played in his career. I think so. <laughs> the Hawks were 
doubling him pretty hard. Yep. Doing their best to say, Lillard, you're not beating us. And you can see uh, the effect that no Chris Middleton had on Milwaukee, having somebody else who can catch the ball and do anything with it. But yeah, two for 12 for Lillard. He didn't score until the third quarter, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. zero at half. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> weird. And I mean, the other side of it, the Bucks gave up 127 points to the Hawks. So yeah, Lillard wasn't scoring, but also they were getting torched on the other end. There will be times when good guards give the Bucks problems, and I think we saw that for the first time in Game Two. Yeah, the uh, excuse me, the Hawks were on fire from three, but a lot of them were wide open looks. Yeah. Uh, a lot coming in transition. Man, I, I watched this game because this was uh, the seven o'clock here, and we're in Atlanta. So. Um, he Brooke Lopez every time the Hawks hit a three was getting more and more visibly frustrated and angrier and like yelling at guys because it felt like he's like who is it was the classic like who is guarding that guy yeah. like whose man is that why is Bogdanovich just you know splashing threes and no one's near him or these guys in transition so yeah good stuff and and I, I'll admit it was one of these games like Hawks got up huge I'm like okay well, hold on to your butts here. They're going to give this one up. Uh, this will be fun. I can't wait for them to lose this because uh, I've seen this story before. And, you know, you got to respect the Bucs and all that. But, yeah, the, they made a, they made it a little bit closer in the second quarter. And then they ripped off, I think, another 14-1 to 1 run. And, and then it was like sort was of a blowout. Yeah. blowout. It was never close. For Atlanta to get their first W. Uh, anyone else? Uh, honorable mention for a loser of the NBA weekend. Raptors, I think, are a little bit of a loser here. They obviously <laughs> lost to the Bulls. Then they lost the Nick Nurse revenge game, yeah. which unfortunately gave Pat Beverly a chance to oh. trash talk them. Like I said, no dogs. I think he tweeted that as he was walking off the court, oh it felt like. Uh, also, we got a great clip of Scotty Barnes being asked what it was like to see Nick Nurse again. He's like, fine, I guess. He was dressed like Grandmama. Yeah, he was. Yeah, <laughs> Insane he had, look. He had the scarf uh, around his head. He had crazy specs on, glasses. Yeah, you yeah. could tell there was a tension yeah. last season between him and Nick Nurse. Yeah, Raptors, rough, rough start. And uh, and what about maybe the Lakers with LeBron uh, flirting with 40 minutes there <sighs> in game three again? So much for this uh, limiting his minutes. Yeah, one and two to start the season. We're like, hey, two and ten ain't going to happen. It's tough in the Western Conference. There are no nights off, and that's why it's like LeBron is probably still going to be racking up heavy minutes. Yep. Let us know, losers of the weekend. Who'd we miss? I see someone here in the stream team, uh, Roy. Austin Hillbilly Kobe Reeves getting exposed now that teams have actually game planned for him. Not getting caught by surprise by an undrafted dude. He's had a rough start to the season uh, for the Lakers. We talked about him, yeah, not being involved too much. Yeah, going at him. It's a good one. It's a good one. Lots out there. Let us know in the stream team. Winners and losers of uh, of our first NBA weekend. So great to have basketball on all weekend long, though, for the sickos. we got to take a break. When we come back, uh, I have a tweet of the night story time, so don't go anywhere. Incredible timing with this next ad read because just the other day I started pulling things from my wardrobe to get rid of, to give to Goodwill. Sure. We're talking khakis that barely fit anymore. Like, oh, I tried to wear them and it was... <laughs> bad man like i gotta get rid of them it's like i'm forcing it here my gut's hurting uh a sweater with holes in it a dress shirt that maybe looked cool in 2001 if you were going to like (laughs) the olive garden or like a milestones like that type of dress shirt you know what i'm talking about stripey it had like a four month cool window (laughs) a stripey dress shirt collar too big size too big it just the worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah. we all had them if you were alive around that time. Uh, no matter what's in your closet, Indochino makes it easy to keep your wardrobe fresh with looks made just for you from suits and shirts to outerwear and more. And for a limited time, you can shop Indochino's best prices of the year during their Black Friday event. Don't wait. Book your appointment now with sales starting in store and online on November 6th. That is right around the corner. Indochino's Black Friday event rocks the best prices of the year. Made for you suits start at just $349 and premium shirts start at just $49. Every suit made to your exact measurements. You can customize any detail, basically every detail. That's the beauty of it all. Create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly with endless customization options. So you can get that exact look that you want and that you need. They got blazers also, pants, skirts, more designed and made for you yeah i said skirts that caught my ear yeah yeah who was wearing skirts uh jordan clarkson 
I can see that being the case. I think he did. Yeah, yeah. I have a few of the guys, fashionable guys, maybe even Shay. Uh, Indochino offers me, you, us, the luxury of ordering custom clothing at a surprisingly affordable price. So refresh your wardrobe with the best prices of the year during Indochino's Black Friday event. Secure your appointment now with sales starting in store and online on November 6th at Indochino.com. That's I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O dot com. Yeah. You know when you look at your clothes, or at least I did, like I said, I was like, I hate half of these clothes. Yeah. Sometimes just you just like, turn on your clothes. I know. I have <laughs> turned my back you get out of here. on so many of my clothes. And they are just like, they're talking in there together. They're like, he hates us. <laughs> he hasn't it's, picked me in so long. It's over for us, yeah. You it's been you... 20 years. 20 years Some... since he's put me on. Yeah, that, that one shirt for sure. <laughs> well, do, you ever have a, do you ever have clothes that you're like, the time's not right for you now, but I'm going to put you in a box and revisit in a few years. That is, that is That's so unlikely, though. That's unlikely. Once that's a shirt unlikely. goes in a box... Yeah. And then goes in another room or somewhere like, <laughs> me, I mean, it, like outside of like a costume thing. Yeah, costumes are got to keep them. You never know. I have put, I will say, I have put all of our basketball Jones starters and no dunks merchandise mm-hmm. over the almost 20 years. All of that is together. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not throwing that out. The archives. That will go in the Hall of Fame one day, of course, <laughs> in a whole wing. But um, no, I, I, no, the answer is. It, well, if it's in a box, I mean, it's no, it doesn't go in a box. It goes in a bag and then it goes to Goodwill. You go straight up. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm a little different. I got some that are donates and then I got some that are do weights. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm thinking of unearthing a whale shirt that I haven't worn for years, but uh, I think it's got to bring down the house when I bring it back. Oh, I, I can't. Well, tell me the day you wear your whale shirt. I'll wear uh, my otter shirt. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday. It's okay. Water Wednesday. Okay, water wearing Wednesday. creature shirts. Uh, JD, you, get a Bucky shirt. Are you dressing up tomorrow for Halloween? Yes. Yeah, I am. For our show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be a werewolf of London. <laughs> Damn. JD, are you dressing up tomorrow? Uh, I wasn't going to. I could wear that Power Ranger costume I have. Yeah. Perfect. But like, you, I, there's no, um, there's no hole for my mouth, so it's like I'll, I'd uh, be a little muffled. Well, just cut it. Out. I could cut it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be weird. A Power Ranger with a mouth? With a human mouth. Yeah, just a... <laughs> okay. Lips out. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I guess maybe I got to get a costume here put together. Uh, let's get to Tweet of the Night. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Twitter. Tweet of the Night, like I said, this is a story. All right. Everybody's got a story. I got one right here. Sam Vecini gets us started with a clip from the weekend, and he says, Josh Giddy threw this thing off of a sideline out-of-bounds play. A sick play by OKC staff. Look at the anticipation on the ball from Giddy. Oh. So it's a it's a beautiful play. Great clip. What a pass from Giddy. Tremendous weight on this. Oh, just gorgeous. Let him there. Nice layup. Okay. So John Hollinger sees that clip, and he retweets it with, Giddy is a slob wizard. Gets a crazy one off like this almost every game. All right? Slob wizard. That sidelines out of bounds. Wizard. All right? I'm not sure if Josh Giddy knows that because he tweets, a slob wizard is insane. Four emojis, uh, laughing emojis with tears there. A slob wizard is insane. I could not stop laughing at this. I loved everything about it. You know, X... X sucks generally, but you get you get gems like this every once in a while. A slob wizard. And then to make it even better, I saw in the replies to Josh Giddy, uh, Marsman Melvin with this Photoshop, uh, Harry Potter and the slob wizard. And uh, he says he's seen this movie before. I, I can't stop thinking and laughing about Josh Giddy responding to John Hollander going, you just called me a slob wizard. <laughs> He's God, that's me a slob wizard. God, it's good. Uh, between this and that Timberwolves Brazil clip. <laughs> oh, that, we might show that on the drop podcast later in the week. You can't show something like that on Monday. That was insane. You cannot show but, that on a Monday. But I would like to uh, reach out to Basketball Reference and the people that run the nickname department of yep. Basketball Reference. I think at least for this week, can we put Slob Wizard up? On Josh Giddy's basketball reference page. All caps? All caps slob? Yeah. I think he got to. 
<laughs> Sloth that's a, wizard. That's a good idea. That's a good. That's a good costume for you to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a guy dressed as a poop wizard over the weekend. What does that entail? Well, he was wearing like a poop hat. You know, like it looks like a poop emoji. Yeah. But it was brown, so from the back, it just looks like a wizard hat. So it's like <laughs> I'm putting on a wizard cape. Poop wizard. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we said we said he should have been carrying a plunger. As like his magic Oh, wand. like a staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, you shall not pass gas! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've got wizard clothes and poop hats if you want for tomorrow's skates. <laughs> I don't know how you dress as a slob wizard. You gotta have the cloak. <laughs> of course. I don't think I don't we know should what you're doing up that. top. <laughs> I think we should leave it at that. Uh, great stuff from, from Sam, from John, from Josh, and of course... Melvin coming through. And of course, Mars Man Melvin. Harry Potter, uh, good good time for Harry Potter movies right now, right? That's like a Halloween franchise, basically, at this point. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a holiday themed. I think I just saw. Yeah, maybe even. Didn't we just have a. Was it a cold open we had or a cold open that we'll be seeing soon? No, yeah, it was a cold open we had. Yeah, it was like, the, ooh, the, uh, yeah. my, my husband pretending he hates all of these fall traditions. I guess we got to watch every oh. Harry Potter movie now. Oh, yeah, he did yeah. say that. You're yeah. right. You're right. Uh, have you fired any up? Or did anybody watch Ocean's Eleven this yeah. weekend? I tweeted at you guys. It was on TV. I saw it was on TV, but it I was? couldn't find it yeah, on Yeah, it was streaming. on E. It was on E online. It was on oh, Direct wow. TV for me, at least. Wow. You know I watched a little bit. Uh, well, actually, speaking of poop, it was the part where uh, Basher... Uh, he's uh, what like the something happens where he figures out like the power's not gonna work or right. something. And he's like okay. then he goes down in the tunnels and then he's sitting there like covered in crap. Poop yeah. wizard. Yeah, a poop wizard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, was you're talking about. that was the part I watched. And then it was like yeah. So then they have to steal the uh, what do they call it? Um, I forget whatever that thing is from the the science center or whatever, like the museum. Like There's that. a name for it. The electric ma- magnet. Yeah, that cuts out the power. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah the, it's got a name. Uh, I don't know what they call that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's the scene where, like, they go in to get it. Clooney tells uh, Matt Damon, stay in the van with the twins. Yep. And then uh, he, they're, they're, like, arguing about things. He's like, screw yeah. this, comes out. But, of course, then, uh, you know, it's nearly gets caught. Great decision by Soderbergh there. Stay in the van. You don't yeah. need to the pinch, the, yeah, pinch. the pinch. The pinch. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, anyway. It was great. I was so happy. I, could, I was so excited when I saw it. I was like, oh my God. Uh, meant to be. <laughs> it's on. It's on. Uh, all right. That's it for us here today on a Monday morning. Uh, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Playback tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Bucks, Heat. Uh, we'll be focusing on that. Is Jimmy Butler playing? We could have made that a loser the weekend. Already, guys. Resting. I think if Embiid would have sat yesterday, oh. we definitely would have had that as a I mean, loser. I will say, what was with the schedule makers? That's wild. Making a lot of three and fours here to start this thing and back to backs and like you're on the road and then you're at home and like I get I guess the idea is like they want to get a lot of the season openers in like yeah. early here, but like ooh, yeah. But anyway, I think uh, I think General Soreness is playing tonight, so we will see Jimmy Butler take on uh, the box and we'll bounce around so uh hit that link in the show notes to join our playback room and if you have league pass you can obviously link it up we can watch the game together if you don't have league pass you can still just have this as a second screen if you want to do that whole thing or just hear us talk about the games and a bunch of nonsense uh on the new is this good podcast which just went up this morning zach harper of the athletic and cinephobe uh he joined Matty O and JD to discuss, among other things, the dangers of blowing into an ancient flute. <laughs> what are you, slob wizards? Uh, wearing a costume that no one gets. The rules of house sitting. I'm intrigued by that. And a lot more. This is a good one. Uh, JD, Zach Harper back on for what, second time here? Yeah, he's great. He's always awesome. And they just uh, had their 200th episode of Cinephile. Wow. Cinephobe. Cinephobe. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Okay, congrats to Zach Harper and the team there. Uh, so go check that out. Is this good? It's on uh, YouTube feed. It's on podcast feed. There is a link to the YouTube feed uh, in our show notes as well. It's all down there. It's all down so there. Go and look. <laughs> and I will try and get the timestamps in today as well. I think I forgot on Friday. Whoops. My bad. Friday, baby. All right, guys. We will see you tonight or tomorrow morning here at 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, Clipper Bro. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, Skims is the official underwear partner of the NBA. <laughs> they got an underwear partner. You think we got some? Or NBA adjacent? <laughs> I would wear them gladly. Spanks, basically? Is that what they are? Yeah. Skims, yeah. It seems how, like how far do they go up? 
Like we're talking as far as you want, man. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, you think we? You think we you can want? get the men's underwear that goes all the way up that also has the built-in nipples? Ooh, that's a great call. Wow. Some days are hard, but these nipples are harder. <laughs> that was a real quote I heard this morning. <laughs> Embrace the day, people. <laughs>